Yeah, right then, guys and girls, hello, welcome back. And uh, yeah, I've gone and done it, I've gone and bought something. Um, I did sort my finances out today, and I can afford to buy uh, something that I said I was going to buy. Uh, now, with regards to hunting in the UK, you can't use a bow and arrow to kill animals. And this is a law since the, the 1960s because of the uh, animal rights people. Which does make sense because if you don't kill an animal outright, it goes through undue suffering, doesn't it? So uh, people with bows and arrows that don't know what they're doing might well uh, injure an animal, which then leads on to its suffering. Okay, But it's a tool that can be used for hunting. Almost every other country in the world allow um, bows and arrows. The UK doesn't, which has left me in a bit of a quandary about... Um, using a cross bolt or something like a compound bow to uh, to do hunting with yeah but i've gone ahead and bought one okay <coughs> spent um some today doing some research which might be the best um one to buy now there are three types there's the long bow which you know about robin hood um then there's another one which uh survival uh, lily talks about and there's a video link down below if you want to have a look at that yeah it's it's quite interesting actually she does comparisons and i can't remember the name of it which means if i can't remember the name it's not valid for me okay but you do need a lot of strength to pull on the on the uh, um, string yeah now the other one is a compound bow which has got uh, cams or wheels on either ends. Now you'd have maybe first seen one of those in the Stallone movie, Rambo, First Blood. He used one of those with an explosive tip on it. Yeah, I remember the one of the Blade movies. Uh, female, she was an archer, used a complex uh, compound bow, and I'd never seen anything like that before. And I thought, well, that looks quite cool actually yeah and well it is commonplace now it's commonplace now it is quite a complicated setup and it has a lot of moving parts with it which is unfortunate for some people if you're out in the wilds you won't really want the basic as possible if we're going through shtf for any length of time parts will not be available but i'm a technician and i i like a little bit of a mechanical challenge for setting things up just right so i thought well i'll, I'll get one so i've uh, uh, throwing a couple of hundred quid that way and it should be delivered here um, in the next couple of days from Amazon and I thought well I better start to get stuff in like that now um, because things might just stop or the stock in on Amazon might not be as good I don't know they might even uh, stop selling them completely you, you don't know how things are going to play out yeah um, my mother complains about a monk jack deer uh, which uh, keeps eating her flower heads it comes to the front of a house it, it chews away and then disappears there is uh, no close season for hunting those deer uh, compared to other deers where they have uh, open and close seasons uh, for hunting and they're considered vermin they're uh, an invasion invasionary species to this country and apparently in the 18 1830s something like that uh, a couple uh, escaped from woburn abbey wildlife park and they've just multiplied ever since and they are in massive numbers around here i've seen them all over the place all the time yeah it would be you know what would happen if i was to um hunt and kill one of those uh, within sight of that housing estate the uh, the residents they would go absolutely berserk wouldn't they i'd also get arrested for animal abuse and anything else they could throw at me but it's a meat source isn't it i see a, a roe deer today down the road just standing in a field staring at me and i thought yeah right okay <laughs> free free mre meat source there a lot of work to skin it but it's it's a resource and there's loads around here they get killed on the road quite often yeah so the, the whole idea really is to, is to practice first of all and get that skill sorted and then see how things pan out because things might get better in a couple of years we don't know we don't know how this is going to pan out or it could get worse it could be an entourage of people um screaming out to get protein and they will do anything okay i know we've had uh, lots of incidences in history where uh, landlords feudal landlords have uh, got their uh, residents living on their lands for poaching yeah and 
landlords still have private gamekeepers, okay? Um, which, yeah, there can be prison sentences involved with poaching, but if there's a lot of people who do it, they can't stop it, can they? Yeah, quite a worry because they would decimate the wildlife very, very quickly. So we're going to have to play this one. We're going to have to play this one by ear. There's always the neighbours' cats and dogs to eat, isn't there? I'll try to keep a straight face when I'm saying that, yeah. But, yeah, it's it's a one. It's just a practice, yeah. Um, UK Preppers Guides... Uh, link below it will tell you about um, the usages of what you can use and what the law is and it will also tell you about the advice what you can do what groups you can join and what type of bows are actually uh, applicable to what and it, it's an interesting blog which is better than me telling you where to go rather than just me regurgitating the same thing yeah so we'll see how uh, how this arrives um i've got a, i'm getting it delivered to work which is not a good thing because they're always nosy to find out what's in the box but then the next stage is to, to practice and get used to it i'm left-handed yeah so i bought a right-handed one which would be held like that and my boy's right-handed so hopefully he'll use that and i'll progress onto something a bit simpler we'll see how it goes he's keen on hunting and um we have relatives in different parts of the world and, and they do hunt so that'd be nice to rock up there with a bow and arrow and actually uh, make less noise the other thing though um which i'll just quickly say is is about the tactical uh, side of it okay it's stealthy and it's quiet okay it's short distance so you can't really do too much damage with it but you can add different fittings to an arrow i.e. you can send a flame into something can't you with an arrow you've seen it on the movies haven't you <laughs> um, but you can also use maybe uh, uh, impact explosives if it's uh, necessary yeah or it's possible to find stuff like that it's it is a little bit more versatile plus with a simple bow and a simple arrow you can make those whereas uh, like in in the uk okay we don't have many guns the ammunition won't last very long guns don't last very long they wear out whereas you can you can make your own uh, bow and arrow if you have the skill for it yeah so it's just a thought it's keeping it simple as possible but first what we're going to do like i said the the uh, compound bow is the most uh, technically complex which is good, it's something to play with in the meantime and as things progress we'll see how it happens Yeah, the apocalypse <laughs> chronicles, yeah the apocalypse, yeah, you can hear them roaring about up there, can't you, upstairs those planes yeah, there's an RAF base not too far off from here and they are very, very busy at the moment ah, anyway alright, I've said enough so I shall go and uh, have some of this uh, Grits and Vakasha, which is grits. You know what grits is? Buckwheat, yeah. Nice stuff, actually. Um, nutrient dense. All right. And I'll, I'll just show you this before I go. I bought a box of happy eggs, and you can imagine there's always one, isn't there, in a box that's unhappy? Yeah. <laughs> always one in a box that's unhappy. And we've got Dozy here as well, have we? Yeah. Anyway, all right. Be seeing you later, guys. Take it easy.